Psychologists have spent decades studying the brains of known serial killers in an attempt to find out what makes them tick. Many of them suffer from antisocial personality disorder or deeper mental illness. What could explain their behavior? However, this leads us to a new moral issue. Should mentally ill serial killers be held responsible for their actions? Although these murderers are disturbed psychopaths, very few actually have a diagnosable mental illness. This list includes famous murderers with antisocial personality disorders and paranoid schizophrenic killers. Are you ready to know them all? These are 8 Serial Killers Who Suffered From Mental Illness Number 8. Kristen Gilbert Kristen, a 33-year-old nurse, mother of two kids and divorced, was a seemingly normal woman who had a great secret. She was a serial killer. It all started in 1996, when Kristen's co-workers reported their concern about an increasing cardiac arrest deaths that always seemed to occur during her shift. At the same time, supplies of ephedrine, a drug with the potential to cause heart failure, began to go missing. Kristen was found guilty of murdering four VA patients and also convicted of attempting to murder three other hospital patients at the Veterans Administration Medical Center in Northampton, Massachusetts. But why did she do that? According to research, Gilbert checked herself into psychiatric hospitals seven times, and she was also diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, a mental illness characterized by a long-term pattern of unstable relationships distorted sense of self, and strong emotional reactions. But maybe she was motivated by gaining the attention of a VA police officer with whom she'd been having an affair. Number 7. Ed Gain Childhood and adolescence are two important stages in the life of a serial killer, so that's why Edward Theodore Gain, also known as Ed Gain, deserves to be part of this list. Son of a timid alcoholic father and a fanatically religious mother, he became a psychopath with an Oedipus complex, obsessed with blood and torture. Despite having committed few murders, Ed Gain has been known as one of the most ruthless serial killers of all time, and his house was an absolute horror. Not only did the police find the body of a missing boy, but they also found skulls, body parts of other victims, and skin throughout the home. Gain was diagnosed with schizophrenia and declared mentally unfit to stand trial and was sent to a state hospital in Wisconsin. In 1968, a judge found him guilty by reason of insanity, and he spent the rest of his days in a state facility. Because of the extreme nature of his crimes, he was the inspiration for writer Robert Bloch's character Norman Bates in the 1959 novel Psycho, which in 1960 was turned into a film starring Anthony Perkins and directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Number 6. David Berkowitz, The Son of Sam I'm the son of Sam, and I love hunting. That's what David Berkowitz always wrote at the scene of his crimes. Devoted to Satanism and smog, this serial killer terrorized New York City, killing six young people at the end of the 70s. During an interview, David said that he was traumatized by the death of his mother and thereafter became more and more of a loner. He pointed to God as guilty, which led him to stop believing in him and to start reading satanic books. Berkowitz claimed that demons and a black Labrador retriever owned by a neighbor named Sam had ordered him to kill people. And so he did. He shot several couples in parked cars with a 44 caliber rifle, hence its nickname, the 44 caliber killer. Besides, during his killing spree, David used to send letters to New York newspapers, signing them Son of Sam a reference to the demon he believed lived inside his neighbor's dog. After being caught, Berkowitz was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and to this day, he continues to be held in prison and regrets the damage he did to so many families. Number 5. Jeffrey Dahmer, the Milwaukee Cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer was a lively and outgoing boy, or so his father remembered him. 
This led him to try new things, and one of the first signs of that criminal germ was the mistreatment he perpetrated on animals. Dahmer claimed that his compulsions toward necrophilia and murder began around the age of 14, but it appears that the breakdown of his parents' marriage and their acronymous divorce a few years later may have been the catalyst for turning these thoughts into actions. He was arrested in 1991 and confessed to sexually abusing, killing, and dismembering 17 men. In addition, Dahmer told police he had also committed necrophilia and cannibalism, so he became the Milwaukee Cannibal. He was sentenced to 15 life terms for a total of 957 years in prison. But during this time in prison, he was attacked by another prisoner and died on the way to the hospital from severe head trauma. He was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, as was the first killer in this list, Kristen Gilbert. Number 4. Daniel Gonzalez, the Freddy Krueger Killer Daniel Gonzalez was a British pre-killer who murdered four people and injured two others during two days across London and Sussex in September 2004. However, the media have tried to say that he feigned mental illness long before the murders, but his mother provided evidences demonstrating that he was actually ill. In fact, she had previously written to her MP criticizing the fact that a serious incident had to occur before he could receive mental help. Gonzalez was inspired by horror films such as A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th to become a famous serial killer. He went on a drug-fueled stabbing spree, attacking the elderly and infirm, writing about his experiences in letters to himself as Zippy, his past nickname. His letters said how much he enjoyed the murders, one of the best things I've done in my life, and how similar he was to Freddy Krueger. The young man was still only 26 years old when he was found dead in his room at Broadmoor Hospital, England. It was believed to have committed suicide. Number 3. Albert Fish, the Brooklyn Vampire Not all the stories about serial killers are as terrifying as that of Albert Fish, known as the Vampire of Brooklyn. This quiet man, born in Washington, D.C. in 1870, was accused of at least three murders and confessed to raping about a hundred children throughout his life. Besides, the police discovered that he was the author of acts of cannibalism that took the lives of several children during his period of criminal activity. As a child, Fish was plagued by mental illness, as were a number of his family members, and everything went worse when his father died. His widowed mother didn't have the resources to care for Albert and got him to a state orphanage. By 1917, Fish was having difficulty concealing the symptoms of several mental illness, leading his wife to leave him for another man. Since then, he started having auditory hallucinations and killing without control at the age of 60. The trial of Albert Fish demonstrated quite clearly that the man was insane. The jury found him sane enough to be found guilty. The trial ended with a verdict that saw Fish executed by electrocution the following year. Number 2. Richard Chase, the Vampire of Sacramento Richard Chase was born in 1950, Santa Clara, California, and his problems grew worse when he got older. Chase turned to alcohol and drugs, which quickly turned into substance abuse. He was disturbed and unhappy as a child, and his symptoms grew worse in adolescence. He set several small fires, frequently wet the bed, and displayed signs of cruelty towards animals. In 1977, Richard was fully convinced that his organs were moving inside his body, that his heart was slowing down due to lack of blood, and that his stomach was rotting. Given his nickname, it doesn't come out as much of a surprise that Richard Chase's trademark was drinking the blood of his victims after he killed them, so was nicknamed the Vampire of Sacramento. He ended up killing six people. The Sacramento Vampire didn't deny anything. On the contrary, in his bizarre confession, he claimed that there was an assassination plot involving his parents, Frank Sinatra, Hugh Hefner, the Mafia, and the Germans. Number 1. 
James Holmes, The Joker of Aurora The most famous criminal inspired by the Joker was the young James Holmes, author of the so-called Aurora Theater shooting on July 20, 2012. That day, James entered the Century 16 movie wearing a gas mask and red-dyed hair to simulate a scene from a Batman comic. He detonated tear gas canisters and fired indiscriminately at the audience in the room, killing 12 people and wounding 70. According to two federal agents, Holm referred to himself as the Joker. The young man was subject to different intelligence tests, and the result was that his IQ was 123, showing that his intelligence was much higher than the average. However, he was also diagnosed with dysphoric mania, a severe depressive episode accompanied by manic psychosis. Holmes was sentenced to life in prison without parole. As we said at the beginning of this video, not all serial killers had a diagnosed mental illness. Some became such important characters that they have gone down in history as real monsters. Would you like to know more about these stories? If so, take a look at the following video.